I think this really is a fantastic moment. It's 150 years since Harold Burkhill recorded the last large blue butterfly on Robra Common. And I can stand here today in this fantastic weather with large blues flying around my legs. Last year we reintroduced just over 500 large blue caterpillars onto this site. Then there's a very, very long wait, an impatient wait to see what's going to happen the following year. And after a culmination of several years of work, um, it's paid off this year where the lush banks of Robra Common now support the vibrant flash of blue of the large blue butterfly. The butterfly has several key things that it actually needs to be able to survive. The first thing of all is it has to have present the food plant that the female lays her eggs on. And this can either be thyme or it can be marjoram. One of the good things about this site is we've got both of those species. It needs very high densities of the ant Myrmica sapuliti that it parasitizes. And again, we've been able to demonstrate by surveys actually spanning back five, six years. We watched as the grazing increased, the density and the abundance of those ants increased dramatically. The large blue has a, a truly incredible life cycle. The caterpillar is actually exuding pheromones that mimic the same smells that the ant grubs uh, emit. It then also behaves very like an ant grub. So the ant thinks it's one of its own grubs that somehow has got lost, picks it up and takes it underground and, and puts it in the ant's nest. The large blue is so important uh, for us because it spreads the wider National Trust message of conservation and the main principles of what we're trying to achieve today. It's all about good land management. It's all about bringing things back from the brink. And the hope is, if we're successful with the re-establishment of the large blue on the commons, the commons can act as a reservoir for the butterfly to move out from onto other limestone grasslands in the area. It's called the large blue because it's actually just slightly larger than any other species of blue in Britain. It's the only species of blue in this country that has black spots right on the top of the forewings. My top tip is if you see a blue butterfly and a reddish blue plant, you're more than likely to actually identify that as a large blue. Fortunately, it's been much more successful than anyone had hoped. It's difficult to say exactly how many adults have appeared, but certainly very good numbers. So, if you can actually conserve what is one of the most difficult species to conserve, then it gives hope. It's some kind of flagship and hope for other species.